police have been firing indiscriminately, but still there are thousands of people on the streets who will not move back. From Tiananmen Square, the sound of gunfire sounded like a battle, but it was one-sided. Hundreds of unarmed civilians, hungry for freedom, mowed down in Beijing by gun-firing soldiers. At this hour, there are hundreds of thousands of people here in Tiananmen Square, perhaps as many as a half a million, even more. In the history of communist China, there has never been anything like this. Tens of thousands of students jammed Tiananmen Square in Beijing, demanding more freedom. In the spring of 1989, communist China saw massive demonstrations by citizens demanding political and economic reforms. An entire society turning against its rulers, but doing so in a peaceful manner. That is what is noticeable with this size here. This is a peaceful revolutionary movement for change in China. In April, following the death of prominent party member Hu Yabang, a symbol of reform, tens of thousands of students gathered to mourn in Tiananmen Square. Through April and May, the number of demonstrators swelled to more than a million, now including industrial workers and members of the military and police. On May 19th, Li Peng, premier of the People's Republic of China, declared martial law. On May 20th, the People's Liberation Army attempted to occupy Beijing, but was blocked by protesters. Unable to reach Tiananmen Square, and also unable to exit the city, the army remained stuck for nearly three days. Demonstrators conducted sit-ins and hunger strikes and called for democratic reforms. On June 2nd, party elders declared the protest a counter-revolutionary riot and called in troops with orders to not fire on civilians, but to clear the square by 6 a.m. June 4th, with no exceptions or delays. On June 3rd, troops approached Beijing from multiple directions. The people took to the streets and erected barricades. Around 10.30 p.m., as the army attempted to break through the barricades, the people began yelling at soldiers and throwing rocks. Soldiers opened fire on the civilians. Around 1 a.m. on June 4th, the army reached Tiananmen Square and ordered the protesters to leave. The students voted on whether to stay or go, and then left the square. Later that morning, people returned to the square and were again ordered to leave. When the civilians refused, the soldiers again opened fire. As the world watches and listens in horror, the peaceful pro-democracy demonstration in China comes to a violent and bloody end, crushed by waves of Chinese military forces, brutal massacre of Chinese students, and other protesters by the Chinese army. The death count goes on tonight, and it is at least in the hundreds. How many were killed is unknown. Initial reports by the Chinese Red Cross claimed the number could be as high as 2,600. After facing pressure from the Chinese government, the Red Cross retracted that report. According to the Chinese government, only 241 people were killed, including soldiers, and another 7,000 wounded. Outside sources have estimated as many as 10,000 were killed. The army had taken control of Beijing by the next morning, June 5th, but one citizen would have the final word. A column of tanks was moving toward Tiananmen Square when a man carrying shopping bags stepped in front of the column. The identity and fate of the man remains a mystery, but his lone act of defiance is seared into the consciousness of all free people. In the weeks that followed, the Chinese government arrested thousands, with many being sentenced to prison and execution. The Chinese government has outlawed discussing or commemorating the events of the Tiananmen Square Massacre.